Let's talk about the Freeman Guide from Gerber Gear. Stick around. Have you ever had one of those nights where you just kept dreaming about the same thing? You kept dreaming about something you wanted to buy, <laughs> especially when it comes to knives. And I know that all of you knife folk out there, you probably know what I'm talking about. You've probably gone to bed one night and you kept dreaming about a blade. You woke up, you had to have it. I am by no means obsessed with the Freeman Guide. It's just a blade that I've thought about for a long time. It's nothing new under the sun. This has been around for a long time. A lot of people have this. It's very well known. And it is as basic as it gets. And I think that's a big part of its allure. I think people like basic designs, especially a design like this. You got this drop point blade, this tack hide handle that's very grippy and nice and you just got this full tank fixed blade that's not too big. It's pretty easy to just take around with you everywhere you want to go. Now, the Freeman Guide is as budget as it gets. It's made with budget materials. When you hold this knife in your hand, you're going to know that you're holding a budget knife. And the price, like everything else, has gone up on it. What you used to could get for 20, 25 bucks is now around 35. It's made with that budget 5CR17 steel, and it's really sharp, but let's take a look at it. If you go out to the Gerber site, they just make it plain that they created this little fixed blade here to be your go-to knife on the hunt. Sharp blade like this is designed to do some skinning, you know, especially something like whitetail. I don't know how much success you'd have with something this small, you know, skinning some extremely large game, but for deer, something like this would be perfect. It's 8.4 inches in length. It weighs 4.4 ounces. It's really light. Here's the sheath it comes with. It gets a lot of mixed reviews and opinions. I went out to Amazon to just look at the, the score that this knife gets. And most everybody gives it a really good review. They like it, but there are a lot of mixed feelings on the sheath. I've been walking around with it all morning. And for everyday carry fixed blades, I find it comfortable for the most part. I feel like the, the sheath is very compact. It's designed to not take up a lot of room on your side a lot of sheaths will ride high you know you put that thing on your side it'll just ride up and constantly be hitting you in the side or the back i really feel like this is pretty discreet if you've got a flannel shirt on or something like that people are probably not going to see much if any of it you can get this handle in different colors you know me i'm always going to go for the black i'm going to tell you this is light duty this is cutting and some piercing this is a a slicing blade. I've really learned with my knife reviews to test it according to what it's supposed to be used for. You won't see me out here at bushcraft testing this blade because I'm, I wouldn't ever recommend you to go and use this for your bushcraft knife. At the same time, I know there are dudes out there using it for that, uh, and I'm sure they do fine. I, I saw one comment where a guy referred to this as like a weekend warrior knife. He's like, if you're going away for the weekend, to camp, you know, and you just need, you know, something while you're on the camp, you want to do a little bit of light bushcraft, you can. I, I get that fully and completely. I'm just saying this is not a hardcore, beat to death, long-term type of bushcraft blade, if that's what you're shopping for. But if you want to skin a deer, you want to skin some game, you want to do some cutting, you want to have a comfortable fixed blade you can keep with you, I think the Gerber Freeman Guide is up for the task. I do see how this could break very easily. It's got this matte finish. I think it looks good. It's got a good look to it. Again, you know you're kind of holding a, a light duty fixed blade when you get this in your hand. Got the little lanyard hold there on the bottom. But, you know, for cutting, piercing, doing some in reasonable task it's it's great it's got a good size to it uh the the blade is like four inches but it doesn't have four inches of cutting space there it's got the finger grooves here as well really nice comfortable grip there if somebody came to me and they were like man i got 35 bucks to spend and i'm looking for a medium sized fixed blade that's you know not too bulky but just solid enough to do day-to-day -day task I would probably bring this one up. I think a lot of people are attracted to the design. I would bring it up. If someone were to ask me, man, what about even self-defense? What if I had to defend myself with it? Well, you could obviously defend yourself with 
a drop point blade like this that's razor sharp and it's fixed. The biggest question is, can you get to it fast? Could you draw it fast? I don't believe so, and I'll tell you why. Here's what you've got. This thing is hanging on your side this way. It's got a pretty tight retention with this button. You actually have to pull this thing pretty hard to get it to snap, but this is sitting on your side, which I recommend kind of keeping it a little off from the side, a little bit behind this way. It's a little bit more comfortable. You got to pop this, but there's really no quick way to get to the blade here. You, I have to dig down in here and get it like this. It's not a quick deployment blade. If you're just working and you want to grab the tip end of it and get it in your hand and start doing what you've got to do, that's what it's for. Uh, I'm not even advocating this as a self-defense knife. I'm just saying you could if you could get to it, but that's the problem. A self-defense blade's got to be able to handle crashing into bone and all of that kind of stuff, but it's also got to be something you can pull really quick because in a dangerous situation, people's nerves are already sky high. You really got to be trained to just grab the stuff and pull it out and deploy it. And I don't think this gives you a good deployment option. Again, I just threw that in there in case you are wondering. I'm not marketing this blade that way. Now, this is designed and engineered here in America, but I do believe these were manufactured in China. That's not the case for all of their blades, but I do believe it's the case for this one. For me, my experience having the blade, holding the blade was not the same experience I had seeing the blade online. You know what I would do with the Freeman guide? And I'm just saying this for fun. I would toughen this thing up. I would, I would build this same design more sturdy. I would thicken up that spine. I'd make this a lot more sturdy. I'd go with 420 high carbon and I'd pay twice the price for this knife if they would do that. I mean, they could have actually taken this same design and made it very close to like the strong arm you know, make it as thick as the strong arm, as solid, but yet use this design, I would buy it. The way this is constructed, I'm just not really that into it. If I was gonna, you know, just skin something, yeah, that's fine. But with this blade, there's so much more potential. With this design, there's so much more potential. I don't hate the Freeman guide. I think it's a cool knife. There's just so much more I would do with it. That's just my thoughts. That's my opinion. If you love the knife, I get it. I get it, man. The look, the feel, the handle, um, it's simple, it's simple approach. I get it. These are just my thoughts and I'm super excited to finally have had a chance to talk about this. What's your thoughts on the Freeman Guide? Do you have it? Do you love it? Do you use it? Tell me all about it. Thanks for watching. Take care.